cloudy. Uh, kind of wet day in Wisconsin, October. Uh, that should be a tree we're taking down, but we're not. That's a dead ash tree. A couple dead ash trees here. What they want are these uh, three white pines out of here. And uh, they're pretty big ones. A couple of big two stemmers. Looks like we can lay some stuff down. I think we got an old septic field out here. Hmm. White pines are notorious for punching long pieces into the ground. Some big, that whole front lead maybe, and then be able to make other drop cuts. This one's kind of over the house. We'll probably set up the lift. Glad we got the lift. These will be kind of sticky. So, kind of some precarious crotches here. I can see why they want to take them down. You know, that, that branch is cracked actually right there that's over the house so with the uh, oftentimes when you get that kind of similarity between the the trunk and the branch it'll uh, create a, a higher propensity for failure when your your branch diameter is close to the uh, tree diameter so that's kind of a hazard plus the uh, the vertical linear crack in that that limb that could that could break any time so at any rate that's definitely a category for removal these these lower big crotches also big chance for failure there as well as this one so they're all kind of not ideal forms that's a huge look at that that is a huge lower branch on that that white pine um, so kind of cool architecture but uh, a little close to the house for that kind of stuff so I think we can lay we can lay some big pieces down here so this is this is gonna be fairly efficient we can drop that piece off we can drop that front piece off there uh, this is the one we're going to have to really piece down with the lift. So, I think we'll, uh, we'll make a mess over, over there and probably set up the lift on this side of, of this one. Right here. Might take off a couple branches off this ash as a courtesy. Uh, I get the lift in here. And we can make a bunch of easy drop cuts and then piece this side down um, make a little crash pad in here with these white pine branches and we can just block that out we may not have to do a lot of rigging I don't really appreciate rigging white pine it tends to be very gooey uh, a lot of resin uh, coming out of these so at any rate I think we got a plan and we'll get together with the crew and talk it through. We gotta bring our lift all the way around. We got no trespassing on this property over here. It's actually a separate property. So we're gonna have to come down the highway with the lift. I think we're gonna, we're gonna chase it with the big truck, put Godzilla behind it, keep the cars off. Uh, so that'll, that'll be our biggest hazard coming down the highway here. No one will slow down for us, I'm sure. All right. Game of Trees is on. Let's get her done. I'm gonna take your Spy 72. All right. Go make some cuts. I don't think I'll ding it up at all. <laughs> Mike maintenance is all of our saws. So he, he gets partial to certain ones. <laughs> Big 
oval branch. But obviously, a lot of weight. Just gonna break this off. A lot of weight out here. And so, if you just make a regular notch and try to cut it, this could split right up the middle, come off, and you know, fall on me. So, that's always a problem. Some people without a lot of experience might say, oh, we already got a lean. I hardly even have to make a notch. And they'll just start cutting here, and this will split right up the middle and it happens very dramatically so we'll make a notch down here and then i'm going to plunge through and make my hinge and then i can actually just cut right up from the inside out and this this top side will just pop off and i'll be able to step back behind the tree in a safe safe spot so we're going to start that process So I just gotta bring this down here. I came through at a little bit of an angle. I'll be behind that. I might change my notch a little bit. I'll probably come through here, make myself a little straighter. And come through there straight. weight it broke before I even got here and I had I had this whole middle cut out um, so if you try to do this without without the middle cut out this this splits up the middle of the log so um, that pressure that pressure can do a lot of things so you want to try to get everything in your favor so even if it you know sometimes it breaks even when you're doing the extra center cuts here the plunge cutting uh, but anyhow we got her on the ground
drive up and get this one out of the way. Okay, stand clear. Oh, that was nice. Nice pop. Okay. to that grapple I don't like. I think we're gonna make some renovations. There's no way to heal the the grapple against anything. It's it's free hanging. And I don't know why the manufacturer didn't realize that it's better to have a grapple you can lean against something and use leverage and, and hold your grapple in a particular position to grab something. When it's free hanging, you gotta just swing it around and get it in the right spot. Uh, so, anyways, we'll do a review on that sometime. He pressed and grabbed the uh, rope, but didn't realize it was just hanging there. This is where uh, you know climbing would have been a pain. You want to tick off a climber, just uh, run his rope through all the pulleys. Forget the tie and the stopper knot at the bottom when you pull up the line. That'll make him real happy. Make him climb throughout the tree to put up the blocks again. I don't recommend it. another piece along with it.
there we go. Wet and fungusy. That's what white pine is. Take a half a wrap. Two cuts. Oh, start my motor again. Okay, hold it. Look at that, we could have raked, we could have blown all of those needles out of the way. Now we're raking them all. Oh well, we can still get the blower out. Maybe Mark will show up today. There would have been a blower running already if Mark was here. works nice this box that we put on the ground about six foot lengths we fill up the back technically the front and then we fill up the back shut the doors pick it up every once in a while we're a little heavy and we have to help it with the loader <laughs> to pick it up but uh, this is white pine it's only about 55 pounds per cubic foot versus oak, which is like 65 pounds. So we should be able to pick up this box, no problem. But well, here's an interesting phenomenon. A wild, almost wild honey locust. You know, the pods here, when they're green, the the pulp inside is edible. It's it's actually rather sweet. Uh, nothing really to eat on them now. But that's a lot of pods. <laughs> on the true wild version, there's two and a half inch woody thorns on these branches. That'd be fun. And all up and down the trunk, all these big thorns. I don't see any thorns on this one though. Lots of pods. Another dead ash tree. Plenty of work on this property. Now, I'd be surprised if this picks this up. Everything wants to roll out of these. Might do it. Look at that. I don't like the shape of this grapple either. I kind of 
teardrop shape, it just doesn't work. It drops pieces out of there often. It's kind of frustrating. So the story goes, if you can read that, it says Harkin. Uh, Greg Good and his crew were doing a job in the backyard of the president of Harkin Winch. And I think the president. This is a lot of years ago when I heard this story. And they were so impressed with what they were doing and how they rigged down the tree. And, and Greg said, well, it'd be a lot more impressive if we had the permission to use your winch on the base of the tree. And so one thing led to another and he designed this plate and was able to, uh, you know, get a patent. And there was a little bit of a patent issue, <laughs> dispute that wasn't really a dispute. Uh, Greg, Greg won, it just was a, because it's so revolutionized. The winches that are the, the tools like this that were available at the time, it took two men to, to tend them. One guy had to tend the rope and one guy had to crank the, the crank. And this winch, no matter which way you turn it, it it's you know certain amount of leverage this way, 22 to one, 44 to one this way, and it has this self tailor right here, so it holds the rope. You can bring the rope down, put it through the self tailor or the the keepers there. You take this off, and you fill the thing up with wraps, pull it tight, put one more on there, comes around a little, you know, keeper, and then it goes in there and it, it self-tails itself, so as you crank this, it, ke it tends itself, so one guy can lift something up lift a thousand pound log up to a up to a pulley and then to take it off you we, we cover the wraps with our our one hand and then with the other hand you can just unwrap this but you want to keep it tight as you go so that's why you cover those wraps with one hand and then you come down to one and you come through the pigtail and you take let it down so one guy so it was a revolutionary design that you know deserved its own patent because it, it eliminated one person out of the, the system so very very cool you can pull trees over with this you know and even if you're felling something by yourself or you know the crews in a different part on the site you can you can set up a tree pre-tension it cut your notch and plunge cut and back cut and the tree can just fall over with the pretension. So really cool device and uh, we really like them. This is our third one. So we have three of them running around. My first one, like I said, was serial number four and we got that in maybe 2003, 2000, early 2000s, 2002 maybe. So that's the good rigging control system right there.
Yeah.
it's day two out here. I guess we are taking out these ash trees. Obviously, we cut that one down out there. Um, so we had a total of six trees coming down here. Pretty big day yesterday. We got five of them on the ground and uh, four of them pretty much cleaned up. Got all the pines down. Uh, we've got that Siberian elm that we dropped on the ground over there. We just got a couple branches. That's an ash branch actually that got pulled out already. Uh, the elm is basically chipped, just has a little bit of wood left. I've got, I'm going to load these three logs up right now. Uh, we've got a Amish mill. We've got a little bit of trimming to do on that one. Um, but yeah, white pine isn't good structural wood, but I'm having it milled into uh, five quarter, so inch and a quarter stock, and it makes good planking. You know, board you can build shelves with it, or I mean, you could use it for roof roofing planking if you wanted to. Uh, OSB price is coming down though, so we're uh, in the process of you know planning a new shop and. I'm looking at getting a local use uh, authorization to use our own wood in the construction of, of the walls, at least. The trusses will will get engineered. Uh, it's just too, too tricky to mess with trusses. So um, 50 by 100 building, you know, we can build all the walls with, with our own wood. And uh, we, you know, cut down a lot of spruce and red pine, which are both you know, structural grade uh, timber. And so we're making eight by eight posts and then uh, inch and three quarter uh, stock for, you know, the cross members. And uh, everything's 10 foot six generally. And so the posts will go 10 feet apart and tie them together with cross members. So yeah, looking forward to, to that project, but Right now we've got this one. So we were gonna grind the stumps today. Uh, we got a little stump grinder coming. We've got a big stump grinder for the Bobcat we'll run back and get. We're pretty close to our shop. So uh, we should get this all wrapped up today. But uh, a lot of raking to do, that's a big yard. So we're coming back with five guys to get this done. All right. Hey, oh. all you have huh did you guys get rained on while I was gone we got a little Itself into the corn or what? Or it's laying flat somewhere? 
coming this way, yeah. Yeah, I could have. Yeah, throw line bag sitting out overnight. And it was here today, earlier, and then the winds picked up. And it left the throw line behind and blew away. Oh well. Well done. Our wind is a little bit in the wrong direction. It'd be nice if all those needles all over there. Another blower over here? Well, I don't know where, I'm gonna look around for this bag because this is our throw line and our bag blew away in the wind. Where, oh, where could it be? Just a little bit farther. Look at that. It folded up kind of funny and caught the wind and flew away. Well, for all the things that went wrong today, in little ways, uh, it's nice to kind of have something go right. I think this really got Torqued, because that's kind of funny, like got turned inside out. The little things like this happen. Here we go. Oh, I'm pulling from the bottom of the pile. That could lead to trouble. Don't try too hard. Just unwrap it. There's no knots. Just tangle. That's awesome. It's good to find pleasure in the little things. Joy in the trials. You know, stuff like that. Go get that blower now and help Austin. It's pretty wild. Right there at the truck. Those tall weeds between me and that truck is very mature hemp. It's gotta be 12 feet tall. That's quite a crop. I wonder if the authorities know about that. It's just like a wild patch. There's no house on this property, so, you know, nobody really knows. It's just sitting here. Some kid probably knows. <laughs> All right, now here's a dangerous situation. The chain was unhooked. If you unlatch this, all that debris falls out the door. Because you gotta unlatch it with this upper one of the boat.
So they're all loaded up. Um, and we're off to the Amish mill. So our other trailer full of logs is going there as well. All right, this is one of our dump sites. It's kind of a tr trip coming in here. This is backwoods redneck America here. Yeah, this used to be all wood right here, and it was cars everywhere. But this is an old quarry. I'd hate to think what's out here. But everything we're dumping is biodegradable. So whatever they put in here is on them. But what we put in here is biodegradable. But it kind of looks like it gets mixed in with some other stuff. Like tennis shoes. See? Biodegradable. Good stuff. Now all this used to be wood and chips that we dumped here. And we're just in the last couple months. Like he... So he's busy out here. He... This stuff will all come and then it all leaves. I guess that's why they call it recycling. But... This might be the dark side of recycling, but at least there's a lot of this that's getting recycled. So for the recyclers, this is what it looks like sometimes. That's one of our dump sites. We don't come here very often, just when we need to, when we got a really crummy load we come here so this is this is how it is around here <laughs> you gotta share the road with buggies dying of curiosity look at them come on girl <laughs> out of the way So they're getting all affectionate. You know, white pine is an antiseptic. Uh, if you get it cut, you can rub white pine sap on the cut and kill the bacteria. It's one of the world's first band-aids. Just a little note in case you cut yourself in the woods. Well, been a long day, long two days actually. And it uh, looks like we got her all done. Six trees, six, well, five stumps. Clean up and backfill. Everything looks good. This is it, you know, this is what we do. Uh, tomorrow we'll do it again. So Game of Trees, please like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Take care. Playing the game of trees